We want to deliver some information that is very, um, very important to us, as we believe that this is this is how we got brought up, and this is some quite fundamental <coughs> with the foundation on how to kind of build on to with all the other excitement, more competitive stuff. Yeah, because we feel that nowadays when we look at the competitions, there's a lot of effects going on, and there's a lot of mechanics going on, which is very impressive and very useful in the competitive dancing. But we often see a lack of understanding in the fundamentals of what we're doing and the different kind of actions that, that the combination of the different elements creates the different kind of dancing. Yeah? So, the difference between even mechanics and technique. Yeah? My understanding of this is the technique is literally the basic things that I need in order to move. Yeah? So let's say, for instance, if I want to do a longer walk, I would need a certain movement of spine and a settlement in order to take a step. I need to transfer my weight. I need a rotation and I need a settlement to transfer that. That's literally all I need. Yeah? So I don't, in order to just be able to move, I wouldn't need necessarily a upper body movement, a upper body muscularity, a upper body settlement. Yeah? But it's good and it's needed and it's a developed version. Yeah? But I shouldn't start by actually doing all the upper body and now suddenly I forget about what's happening underneath. Yeah? And this is what we see when we look at the competition floor often. That there's a lot of, of posture, a lot of upper body movement, but now when you actually have to move, there's something lacking. Yeah? So we get into positions that is actually not pretty to look at and it's not related to the actual characterization of the dancing, yeah? So, in French, uh, today we're going to talk a bit about the rumba, okay? For me, in the rumba, there's three elements that is very characteristic in the rumba. It's the pendulum swing, which is from side to side, yeah? And it's, too, oh, it's important to define the difference between the, the, the different actions. So, there's the pendulum swing, which is just from side to side. There's rotation, which is just forward and backwards. And there's settlement, which is settling of weight up and down. Yeah? So to be able to actually separate those three actions and know how it went, does one action go into another action? Yeah? So for instance, <clears throat> in a rumble walk, it's very clear for me, if I stay here, yeah, there's a settlement that will bring together with my spine, that will bring me onto the step. Yeah? Now there's a weight transfer in order for it. I'm stuck here. I have to transfer my weight. Now, I can decide if that weight transfer is related to a pendulum swing. Or it's just a weight transfer and now the pendulum swing comes. But it's for me to be able to make the decision whether I dance a, a, pen, a pendulum swing together with the weight transfer I'm actually getting a strong position there, full weight on that foot, but now dancing that pendulum swing. Yeah? The pendulum swing then blends into the rotation. Yeah? So once I'm now here and I have right clearly onto that foot, there's a rotation happening around my spine. Yeah? But it's again to be clear that once I get here, I arrive and the rotation doesn't start already but I actually have to finish that pendulum swing before there's a rotation happening. Yeah, to define when does one action start, when does another action begin, and how much of those two are blended together. So in the beginning I want to see this is one action, this is another action. And then at some point I can actually blend them together. But it's very clear in my head when is one action starting, that's a pendulum. Now, when is the other one goes that into a rotation and then into the next? Yeah? Because what I often see, if, for instance, in a back, in a back basic in the beginning, yeah? Is that there's not clear that I arrive over that leg and now I see rotation and settlement and everything together and now I'm falling off the step. So it's not clear that from here I have a clear pendulum that goes into a rotation 
and it's now, even if I didn't do a settlement, in the hip I'll still be able to move. Yeah? Now, let me just go back to the rumble board again. So for, me, for them to actually, sorry guys, I think you should try to just feel also the those separate three, three actions in your body because it's one thing to hear it completely another just to experience it in the body. So yeah. if you can just stand, stand up. up beside your chair for you to, to feel exactly what you're talking So literally it's just the white the foot stand, yeah? And now, what we have to do is to literally separate the different actions. So my, my target is to just do a pendulum swing. So try not to do any rotation. Yes. So you can feel how this is just pendulum from one foot to another. And if you see from the side, it doesn't even go back and forward. It literally just underneath my shoulders, going from side to side. Yes. Yeah? Before, let's just say one thing. Before we even start that, I have to put on my posture. Yeah? So from here, I still have to make my lower spine long. So now I've collected my center because if I do it from here, my bum is already sticking out. Yeah? So I have to put on, I have to lower my lower spine there. So I'm already set up in my position. So it's underneath my shoulder, hip is underneath the shoulder. And I just roll from one foot to another with a pendulum action from side to side. That's it. Good. Yeah? Now let's just talk about another thing. I can do pendulum action without weight transfer. So I can even do this, just to isolate it even more. Yeah, so I don't even have to transfer my weight in order to get the pendulum action. Yes. Yeah, I can decide to do it, but it's again to be aware. Sometimes it seems like other things kind of automatically happen to us and it's not a conscious decision. And it's for us to be so aware of the sensitivity in our body that it's a conscious decision what we do. So I'm able to do just from side to side, no way to transfer, but I'm also ah, now moving my spine with it, which makes it a weight transfer as well. You feel the difference? When yeah. You do it. Good. Good. Now, collect your feet. Now, once we do rotation, what is the center of a rotation? If I want to do a rotation of my hips, what's the center of that rotation? Spine. Spine. Exactly. Yeah? So once I do it here, I want to make a very clear idea that my spine is the center and my hip is literally just going one hip is going forward another one is going backward and that now changes Whoa. so rotation is happening as my center is, is my spine is, is is stationary it just goes back and forward try not to rotate your shoulders and it's your shoulders only yes try to hold your shoulders like this and now just move your hips that's right yeah? So there's a lot of isolation going on, because I only want to do this one action. That's right. Yeah? The same thing we can do if we talk about upper body. I can also only do upper body rotation around my spine. Don't move the hips then. So don't move the hips then, exactly. So as you see, my hips don't move at all. Yeah? And now stay here. It's only hips moving. That's and now right. try no hips, just top. Stop the top and now flip the hip on you. Good. And then the top and the hip on you. Good. And the other way, the top, hip on you. Top, the hip on you. And it's in a way that dry that you have to practice it so you get to discipline the body to be able to isolate all those parts. Yeah, so this is part of what we also do on a daily basis to really get the body familiar with that isolation because it's not really natural, let's face it. You don't really naturally do these things <laughs> before you walk, but you have to discipline the body to do that. Yeah? Yeah. So that, let's, as Ina said, even if we, if we naturally turned our hips, my shoulders would go with would go, it. Yes. So it's to be aware of what's actually going to happen. So no, that's not what I want. I have to oppose inside my body, okay, for my shoulder not to go with it, I have to almost think that it's going forward in my own body. I don't want to put it forward, but because the natural drift takes me back, I have to think that it's slightly energy going forward for it to stay natural or neutral. Yeah? Yeah. So we've done this motion, the pendulum, and now we've done this one, right? That has been the rotation. So what was the last one he mentioned? The seto. So it goes which way? Now what do I settle? What is it I settle? 
hips, weight. Exactly. I settle my weight. Yeah? Now that results in a hip reaction. Yeah? But I'm not trying to put my hip down. Actually, I can have my hip down, but my weight is up. I'm not, my weight is not down now, but my hip is. This is actually very, very uh, clear nowadays, the misunderstanding of settling in a hip, and now I'm basically said, oh, I'm actually just disconnected as of now, right? And then this, this feeling of volume on top, that's where it goes a little bit off track. Versus re literally what Troll says, you can be actually quite high in your center, and you can still ground yourself without even using any hip whatsoever, doing it from the upper body. Yeah, yeah? so try that for one, try to just stand on one leg and just try and lower your, your weight down. So don't try to think now I have to put a hip out as a picture. Yeah. This is kind of the picture I see, okay, set your weight and I see oh. people doing this. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a picture. That's, I just want to feel the actuality of settling weight down. Even through your breath. Connecting your weight down to the floor, that's it. So while I'm doing that, there is a certain muscularity in my, in my thigh yes. that prevents the hip to go out. Because if I naturally go there, my hip will go out. So I have to use a certain muscularity to prevent that hip to go out and just stay in that. And be the grounded way. this way, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, because actually if you try and do this and now release the hip, that's where I feel all the energy goes out of my body. And that's, a, that's what we see often. For instance, if, especially if we change the direction, right? When we have a, a, a back basic. And now for the girls here, if they dance the hip down there, how are they going to move now? Just by him putting me out. That's where I see a lot of this going on. Yeah, or late action because she had, she's used all the action there now. So now she has to, uh, and that foot doesn't become clear weight transfer. Yeah, she has to still, sorry, she has to still from there. Be aware, where does that go into a weight transfer, into rotation, and now that settlement is connected to the power of moving forward. Yeah, so it's not an effect necessarily, yeah? It's a choice, of course we can make it a choice, but then it's conscious decision. She can actually dance that and transfer that weight over. Yeah, quite clear, quite simple, yeah? Um, so, what I would just want to quickly go through is the forward walk and the backward walk, how I actually think about these uh, uh, three actions and how they are gone together. Okay? Now, 